Chapter 58 Little Dark One The joys of a suite are manifold. Not just the cabin size and additional rooms, but a personal butler who can fetch drinks. However, it is the personal service Prince Dahoon previously offered that they need to exploit. Hotel manager Roy Stevens has conveniently worked the staff levels in the crow's nest to allow Prince to be able to slip away. Roy and Hunter lay in wait in the second bedroom. The butler answers the door to Dahoon, who shows him the perfectly prepared Paloma Hermosa. Testing me, weren't you, darling? Prince Dahoon says, as he wafts in with a flourish. Edible flowers, tequila, elderflower, liqueur, fresh fruit, and egg whites. I did have to run to the main kitchen, but it's perfect. Well done, Kieran shouts from the bedroom. You didn't learn that on board the ship. Prince walks through with a smile and a swagger until he sees how bashed up and bandaged Kieran is. Should you be drinking? He asks, genuinely concerned. That is exactly what I need to do, Kieran starts, and then he switches tack. Was it you who threw me over the rail to my death? No, Dalhoum insists, placing the drink in Kieran's hand. Why am I getting flashbacks of your face? Lots of men get that, dear. If you nearly died, maybe mine was the face you conjured up for that last moment of pleasure. I was running the bar alone, Dalhoum says, confident of his alibi. We've never met by the laundry chute? I would remember that. I look forward to it. Did you ever meet with Eric? Eric was sad. I met him there when I could, but he really needed help. I used to hold him while he cried. He cried all the time. The connecting door opens and Hunter walks in with Roy Stevens. Prince stands abruptly, realizing he has just been trapped into admitting he met with Eric. We, we... Sit down, Hunter demands. Prince sits in a panic. In you come, doctor, Hunter says. I wanted to hear more of your story, but he needs attention and we've heard enough. Will I be dismissed? Simon begins to change Kieran's head bandage and checks the wound. Not sure you should be drinking that. It's mainly fruit, Prince offers. Hunter draws a chair to the bed and sits. Tell me about sex with Eric. Dahum feels boxed in and forced to talk. We never did anything like that. I did Eric's full post-mortem, Simon adds. I need a blood and saliva sample from you. Prince turns back and forth, knowing he has been trapped by them all. It was innocent. The sexual fantasy is why some guests cruise. What sexual fantasy? Roy asks. Sir, come on. It's that generation. Suppressed. Never allowed to come out as gay. Forced to marry. How many? One? Two? Hunter asks. Don't underestimate the number of married men who want to come and have fun once a year. And you oblige? Roy Stevens asks Prince. Hunter is about to ask another question, but Roy places a hand on his shoulder to stop him. We, you said, we. Who else is involved? Roy asks. Mr. Stevens, sir, Prince begs. Who? I promise no one loses their job if you talk. You withhold information on contract-breaking activities and you'll be off at the next port. Hunter realizes that Dahum may have an alibi, but if there are others, then the circle of suspects increases. Who, Dahum? Manojan Bogdan he reveals. They're dead. You're in danger, Hunter insists. You need protecting, and I need the name of everyone in your fantasy footsie team, every guest they've met, and where, decade, the pool bar, theater boxes, I want it all. Immunity and job protection. 
Roy nods yes. Who else is involved? Jasmine. Just, just me and Jazz. Jasmine? Kieran asks, knowing her beauty is the envy of many female guests. Yeah, she's mixed nuts, he says. Mixed nuts? Kieran repeats in complete shock. Yeah, back la bale. She male? Hunter asks bluntly. Dahum turns to him. That's disrespectful. Disrespectful? Hunter is back to the no-nonsense approach. She male infers a sex worker. The correct term for jazz is transsexual, Prince says. What the hell are you two if you're not sex workers? Hunter asks, confused. Simon has been joined by Manesh, and they are redressing Kieran's head and listening. We offer a little therapy and fun in the bicycle sheds for customers who have left it way too late to come out. Bicycle sheds? Roy asks. We give them a moment in the service area. By the laundry chute? Hunter asks. One of the guests nicknamed Decade the Cycle Sheds, and it stuck. Why did you not tell us this before? It's a murder inquiry. We would be suspects. Jazz is a man? Kieran asks, still in shock. Jazz? No, she's transsexual, Prince says. Very busy. Some men are sexually attracted to transgender women and feminized men, rather than fully admitting they're gay. Prince wants to leave, but Hunter pegs him to the bed with a ferocious look. Stay put. If you'd have told us this earlier, Sally might still be alive. You go nowhere until I get that list. Hunter speed dials on his cell. Lau, get up to the lounge and keep an eye on Jasmine, the waitress, just in case she is the next target. He turns to Prince. I want the names of all your customers, Bogdans, Manages, and Jasmines. Then you write down all the things you haven't told me that you should have. Your life is in danger. You need me to keep you alive. Prince has become profoundly serious and in an atmosphere you could slice. The mood is broken by Wendy. Ta-da! She is the host who had zapped Kirshner's card, and she stands at the door in a World War II costume. Behind her is Elvis, a zany man in a suit. He is loud before he makes a noise. Tank for Commander Phillips! Tank for Commander Phillips! Elvis says, as if on comms. Wendy and I are delivering a tank for Commander Phillips. Tank? You asked for a mobility scooter, Wendy says. We dressed it up, Elvis announces with glee. They walk into the living area and see the costumed Wendy sit on the dressed scooter. I don't need a mobility scooter, Kieran states. If you want to go about the ship, you have to go on a scooter, right, Doctor? Hunter looks at Simon to be backed up. If you must work, absolutely. The best solution to be mobile, let the machine take the strain, Simon agrees. Even if I had to use a scooter, the tank idea is ridiculous. I like it, Prince says. Sit down and write. Hunter firmly directs to Prince. So it is dressed up a bit show busy because we have a problem. Everyone waits on Elvis. The ship has been given the heads up that the French authorities may not allow us to dock in Tahiti. That's a shock, Hunter murmurs with sarcasm. Nor anywhere else in Polynesia. So, alarm, apart from food, fuel and guest unrest, not my departments, I run out of entertainers and acts. A serious look floods into Hunter's face. Elvis knows he's on dodgy ground. Look, it's an idea. Commander Kieran Phillips has worked the main stage, as have you. He has stories galore, as have you. And you are the talk of the ship. He's famous. 
they've all been downloading his book to read. No, says Hunter. No, Roy adds. Absolutely no, Simon insists. Thanks for asking me, but no, Kieran says. How did you even dream this would be considered? Hunter demands. It wasn't my idea, Elvis says. Nor mine, Wendy adds. <laughs>